Hey you guys, so I wanted to make a video talk to talk about um, something that doesn't get talked about all that much. And that something is persecution. Um, you know, most equipping evangelists they don't they don't like to they don't like to talk about this stuff because it's kind of bad for business, but it is a uh, it is a thing and it needs to be needs to be talked about. Um, you know, last night we did street ministry. We had an incredible, incredible night on the streets. Um, I just saw, just, well, just tell you a few things that, that took place. You know, last night, the first encounter we had was a, a man and a woman that we met. And the man, the guy was really, really receptive to, uh, to everything that we were saying and allowed me to pray for him and, uh, you know, and, 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 pretty pretty awesome encounter but then the girl I said well what about you can I can I pray for you she said no she said I don't want you to pray for me she said I don't let people pray for me she said when people pray for me it causes me pain and that I was like what are you talking about you know and uh, she said yeah she said I can't people I can't go to a church she said I can't be prayed for she said um, she said, I, uh, I can't pick up a Bible. She said, when I do, she said, I just start experiencing headaches and, and pain throughout my body. And uh, so that piqued my interest. And so we started talking a little bit more. And uh, as it turns out, this, this girl had been abused when she was a kid. And the result of that abuse, and the result of that abuse was that she turned to, instead of turning, she said, instead of turning to God, she said, I went into Satanism. And she said, and I, uh, and I was a, I was a Satanist for however many years. And she said, my boyfriend here, you know, he's, he was kind of a non nominal believer, and basically, you know, kind of talked her out of like, you know, she told her that he didn't want her, you know, involved with that kind of stuff, and she had, had begun to move away from it, and, uh, and so, you know, I, I said, well, I explained to her, I said, you know, Jade, if you, if you engage in that kind of activity, the result of that is you're going to open yourself up to demons, and I said, and that's exactly what you're experiencing, I said, but the beauty of, of it is that Jesus came so that you could be set free. I said, and that's one of the things that, that God's, you know, enabled me to do, enabled every believer to do for that matter. And I said, if you want, we can get that garbage out of you. And she was like, nope, nope. She said, I'm, I'm good. I said, you're really not good. I said, uh, it's those demons that cause you to deal with the depression. The Lord just began giving me words of knowledge. I said, it's the demons that cause you to deal with the depression that you're dealing with. It's the demons that cause you to deal with the racing thoughts. It's the demons that cause you to not be able to sleep at night. And I just began going down this list of things that, that I just really felt the Lord saying. And, and she was like, how do you know all that? And I said, well, because the Lord is telling me this stuff about you and I said and he wants to set you free I said so you know you but you but he's not going to do it against your will I said so you know I'm gonna ask you one more time do you want me to pray for you because if you do God will free you and she looked at her boyfriend and she said what do you think and I and he said I think you should do it and so she said oh she agreed to it I was like, thank you, Jesus, you know, and so, uh, we, we began to, um, we began to, I began to share the gospel with her, you know, and, 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 um, as I'm sharing the cross, she said, see, there it goes, she said, I can feel the, um, I've got a migraine, she said, it just came on as soon as you started talking to me, and so I said, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you the reality of God now, the Lord is gonna, the Lord is gonna reveal himself to you, He's going to show you his power and his authority. And so I just, I commanded in the name of Jesus for that migraine to leave. And she looked at her boyfriend and she went, oh my, oh my goodness, Dan, it's, it's gone. And so I 
I led her in a prayer to receive Christ as Savior because that is the foundation of freedom. And I began to lead her in prayers to repent for Satanism and, and involving herself in any satanic rituals and uh, exposing herself to that stuff and led her in a prayer to renounce uh, a bunch of things that, that uh, pertain to Satanism, a bunch of demons that I felt the Lord was leading me to have her renounce and begin to command these things out of her. And, and I mean, she was... You know, these things were clearly manifesting in her body, and the big one was the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear came out. It was pretty pretty rough on her, but, but it came out. And, uh, and, you know, it's funny when you do deliverance. It's like, you know, like this girl, she didn't know anything about anything. But when we were done, I said, how do you feel? And she said, I feel, I feel light. And that's the word that, that the majority of the people use to describe how they feel after they've been through deliverance and so then I then uh you know just encourage them in the faith and it was a pretty powerful encounter um and then you know another another powerful encounter was uh when we we met a group of people well there was a couple people on a porch got a word of knowledge for the for the for the woman that was that was there and it was sciatica and she said yeah she said I do have sciatica I guess she had cancer she had the cancer removed and the result of that was all of a sudden she developed sciatica and I just felt immediately that the Lord was saying that it was a it was a spirit of trauma from surgery and uh, so that's what I dealt with, and uh, I, I had to renounce it. I commanded it to come out of her, and immediately, immediately, all the pain left. And this this girl just began to cry, uh, sob. As if it was the first time in five years that she didn't have excruciating pain. She's got four four little boys too, so back, you know, extreme back pain and. You know, four little boys—they don't—they don't mix too well. So she's crying, and and the Lord just began to 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 set her free from all kinds of different things. And and then her her husband, you know, wanted prayer, and and he got set free from a bunch of things. And he was also healed in his body. It was wild because he he had been in a car accident, and he had crushed like a lot of the bones, like in, in like his whole left arm his leg um and so we begin to begin to pray for him had him renounce the spirit of trauma as well that came in through the accident and when he did all of a sudden his whole left side started shaking i commanded it out of him shaking left all of the pain left the guy was moving his body in ways that he hadn't been able to move and and i mean the lord just the lord set him free and and uh, prayed for the both of them to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they were both, uh, they both had their hands in the air praying in tongues. The whole family did for that matter. There was six of us, eight of us, ten of us actually, all all in a circle. These little boys, they got their hands in the air. and They're like, you know, four years old, five years old. Mom and dad, you know, we're all, we're all worshiping God. And I mean, the presence of God was just so, so intense. But it was a, uh, it was a, a really incredible encounter. It was a really, you know, and that's just two, two things that took place, which, you know, two of, uh, you know, two of probably, um, it was, it was probably two of, uh, two of, you know, a bunch of encounters that's just two things that took place um but the whole but the whole night you know it was just it was just encounter after encounter um yet despite all that was going on the enemy was like very present you're like how does this pertain to persecution well as we were as we were going on the enemy like you know was sending people to like shout at us and I had never really experienced that you know in all my years where 
where so many people were being sent to try to knock us off our game. I mean, we're just like driving or we're praying and we've got people that are driving by us shouting these horrible, horrible swears at us and calling us names and just, uh, you know, as we're praying for people, you know, I mean, I'm talking the worst, most vile swear, swear words, you know, as they go, as they're driving by and, and, uh, you know, people laughing at us and jeering at us and, and, you know, so it's like in the midst of like this powerful move of God out on the streets last night, there was, you know, the enemy was, was sending people to knock us off our game. And, you know, persecution is, uh, is, is, is part of evangelism. You know, the, you know, the Bible says, Jesus said, they hated me. They're going to hate you. He, he also says, you know, blessed are those who are persecuted for the spirit of God and glory rests on them. You know, the Bible says that it's a blessing to be persecuted. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and so here's what I want to say to you. Like, how do you know, like there's some people that are dealing with, maybe you're, you're new to the faith and all of a sudden, you know, people are coming against you or, you know, you're stepping out and you're experiencing, you know, just, uh, you're experiencing persecution, you know, um, you know, whatever. But here's, here's the encouragement. Okay. The encouragement is this, if you're being persecuted, then that's a clear sign that you're doing something right. That's a clear sign that you're doing something right. And here's a hard saying. This is something that may make you squirm a little bit, but it's good that I say this so you can check yourself. If you're not experiencing any kind of persecution, then you need to question, how much am I putting myself out there for the gospel? How much am I going against the grain? Because if you are going against the grain, if you are putting yourself out there, then you will be stirring up the enemy. And when you stir up the enemy, the persecution comes. So that's, uh, that's, that's my word to you. Persecution is a clear sign that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Because when you're going against the grain persecution will come and if you don't if you're not experienced not to say that we need to be that we should be being persecuted every second of every day or every day but if you're somebody that's never really experienced any kind of persecution then then how much are you putting yourself out there all right all right you guys god bless you um I hope that this encourages you. I understand that it's kind of a uh, maybe maybe a, a a bit a bit difficult, but uh, you know, one more thing with the persecution, there is a there is a grace, and I've just made up I made up my mind that I was that I would allow myself to experience that that I'm willing to accept persecution because, you know, I mean, here in America, you know, you're, you we're, we're not going to get killed for sharing our faith. Okay. We, we might get laughed at. We might get called names. We might, you know, we might experience some of that, but I've made up my mind that I'm, that I'm willing to allow myself to experience, you know, a few minutes of, ugh, you know, that I'll allow myself to feel uncomfortable if it means that somebody's eternal destination will be changed. I'm willing to sacrifice five, ten minutes for somebody's eternity. So uh, that's the perspective that I have. That's the perspective that I keep. Um, so anyway, be willing to feel uncomfortable because if you are, that means, uh, that could mean, uh, eternity in heaven for somebody. God bless you guys.